Alright, so what's going on with y'all, man? Welcome back to the Talking Shit Show. Uh, episode 62. Um, thank you for tuning in with me today. Oh, uh, man, what is the title, man? What, what are we doing, man? From What are we doing? Oh, we talk about Phil Jackson stinking ass, man. And then we got some good news, man, on the back end. We got some good news on the back end stuff, side of things, man. So what we're going to do is we're about to go ahead and uh get started because uh, these activities be bullshitting. So uh, let's go ahead and get started, man. And let's check this shit out, man. Let's see what the hell went on this week, man. I hope y'all doing good. Hope y'all cool. Hope y'all staying warm. And I know we had a couple of hot days and shit up here where we at, man. But uh, stay dressed for the weather, man. And don't get sick, man. It's pneumonia weather. Like mama used to say, man. It's pneumonia weather, man. Bundle up. But anyway, wherever y'all are, hope y'all safe, man. Wherever y'all at, man. Let's get on into this, y'all. Anymore. It's too political. You know, Black Lives Matter. The hypocrisy of Phil Jackson. Put him up for a mask. I'm so damn disappointed. So in a recent podcast interview, this former NBA head coach, Phil Jackson, admitted that he actually stopped watching the entire game of basketball. He stopped watching the NBA in Mm. 2020 when he believed they got too political with Black Lives Matter slogans. This is ironic, isn't it? Telling not? you people's real truth. When posed the question, out, when asked why, Phil says the NBA did something uh, wanky, he called it, while in Orlando, namely getting mixed up in politics with a bunch of slogans <clears> on the <throat> court and on the jerseys of the players themselves. He never says BLM, but there's no doubt that what he's talking about, that's exactly what he's talking about. He even kind of kind of mocks it saying uh he joked about it from home with his family mm-hmm. uh let's put up one of the pictures he's obviously referring to okay so field thinks the nba was pandering to a certain audience and demographic which turned a lot of people off that year including himself he says politics should stay out of sports and that folks don't like to see them Mesh. Oh, Phil. Is it political, Phil, to sing proud to be an American? Is it political, Phil, to support um, breast cancer research? Is it political to say Black Lives Matter? How does that become political do they not matter to you you owe your entire damn career to black men <laughs> and you should wax poetic about how you no longer could watch the game you were <coughs> by the game because of politics i thought that was whack as hell too. now i see something i did not see before you know how we've always wondered why is it but that I heard. those who played under phil jackson did not do more, like for example, more like LeBron James. He's doing a lot, okay? I wonder, is it because those who played under Phil Jackson, they were guided by Phil Jackson to remain out of politics, to remain out of activism, to remain out of social I could see that happening. I could see that happening. Because Phil did that happening. Let's be very clear. Black Lives Matter is not political. One is personal, and two is people-centric. Black Lives Matter simply says, we matter too. It's definitely not politics. You got offended by a slogan, sir? Out of all of the racism, bigotry, that has happened inside of the NBA that you are aware of and that you even spoke of on occasion, it was the fact that people put on BLM that made you stop watching the game, not the dysfunction of the game, not the usury of the game, nor the racism that is inside of the industry, but that caused you to stop watching basketball. Sharing thoughts here. I'm disgusted. 
And indeed, he pulled the wool over my eyes, too. And we need to thank the black man for his success in all those rings. No wonder Jeannie Buss left him for that comedian, too. I wish it was Cat Williams. I, I do. That would, that would make it even better. How dare he? How dare he? Yeah. It's, it's, I, I really, all right. Uh, Dr. Phil. So my thing is that I'm, my whole thing is with Phil is that I think it's always been there. It ain't never been, it, like if there's, there's tales, there's people that'll tell you or there's things that say on there that, you know, there's videos you on YouTube that tell you how he was when it came to when it came to politics and when it came to talking about stuff. He he told um I can't think of the player what it was, man, but he told somebody he didn't want him hanging down there in Compton and all that on the corners or whatever like that. And it's like, yo, that's I mean that nigga, that's where I'm from, from the hood, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna be where I am. So it's it's been early. You can look that up, man. He been he been he been racist, man. It's just y'all gotta remember that these old cats is not even from this era, man. They from a whole nother era, man. These is dinosaurs, man. We talking about. Of course they racist, man. Anyway, moving on, man. Potential legal issues for Marvel star Jonathan Majors. Majors was arrested last month on domestic violence charges. This shit whack his his attorney saying today that his client is innocent and will be exonerated. NBC News correspondent Nyla Charles joins us now with the latest developments that shit, in this. That shit, hey, Nyla. That shit is over with. Hey, Savannah, well. since Major was charged in March, his attorney has said he's innocent. But now new court documents filed by his defense aim to put the accuser's credibility into question, saying this is an attempt to destroy his reputation, all because he broke up with her. Mm -hmm. New documents obtained by NBC News give a glimpse into actor Jonathan Major's defense amid his legal battle. Good to see you again. The Creed Three star is charged with harassment and assault for an alleged domestic dispute with a 30-year-old woman in New York City in late March. In a letter to the court, his defense citing irrefutable evidence that Majors is innocent. Police say they responded to a 911 <coughs> call. Upon arrival, they say the victim accused Majors of assault, and investigators verified the claims. But Majors' defense disputes those claims. Court documents filed by his defense say that night the woman assaulted Majors in a car mm -hmm. and then went to a nightclub without him. Submitting screenshots they say were taken from surveillance cameras and show she was visibly uninjured. Hours later, Major says he found her unconscious in his locked bedroom with minor injuries. NBC News is not naming the accuser or showing her face. This week, Variety exclusively reporting that more women are accusing Majors of abuse and that they are cooperating with the Manhattan DA's office. In response to the Variety article, Major's attorney maintains his innocence and says he will be fully exonerated. Deadline reports he's been dropped by his management and PR teams in multiple projects. NBC News has not been able to independently verify the variety or the deadline <coughs> reporting. Meanwhile, Disney hasn't commented on Major's future as King the Conqueror in the 2025 Marvel Avengers film. The once considered rising star now riddled with controversy. And Nyella, what do we know about that 911 call? Well, Savannah, Major's defense says he's actually the one who called 911 after he found the woman in his bedroom the next morning, after right. she sent him a suicide note in response to his breakup text. Right. His next court appearance is set for May 8th, and the Manhattan DA declined to comment on potential mm -hmm. additional accusers. These, Savannah? I'm telling you, Thank you very much. I'm telling you, man, these chicks is crazy out here, yo. Like, <sighs> man, watch who you, man, watch... Watch who you fucking with, man. These chicks is crazy. Look how they try to do this nigga. They got pictures of surveillance from a nightclub. This bitch went out kicking it after she tried to jump on him. Then she going to try to call that shit. She going to try to call, you know what I'm saying? Call like she got, <laughs> like me, but this nigga the one that called the police. That shit funny as hell, man. Nice try, bitch. Try again. Stupid ass. But anyway, moving on, man. Multi, a, a multi-million dollar fraud and conspiracy charge, oh, yeah, or several charges. Shit. The Grammy Award winner, Pras Michelle, is accused of using Pras stolen cash to make rat. illegal political contributions. In 2019, a 2019 indictment accused Michelle of helping a Malaysian financier embezzle money from a state-owned investment fund. He allegedly tried to persuade U.S. officials to abandon an investigation 
into that financier's business dealings. Michelle has denied all wrongdoing. So for more on this, I want to bring in Randy Kessler. He's a lawyer who has represented several celebrities and a trial law professor at Emory University. He's also <coughs> a founding partner at K&S Family Law Firm. Thanks for joining us. So I remember reading about this years ago, and I guess I just thought that it had somehow resolved itself, but it was quite sort of complicated. So can you just explain to us what the government is alleging happened? Well, quite complicated is sort of an understatement. This could be a whole course in law school. It could be a whole, you know, documentary and a whole TV show. It probably will be. But generally, the government is trying to say foreign governments stay away from us, keep out of our business. And they're saying that he was somehow involved on two fronts. One, funneling money to the Obama administration by paying for donors to come to events and then reimbursing them with foreign money. And then later trying to pressure the the next administration, the Trump administration, into releasing a dissident or getting him back to China um, and maybe not even helping with the prosecution of this guy, Joe Lowe, who everybody knows is behind the scenes and he's a co-defendant, but he's just not here. He's in China, so he's not really subject to this jurisdiction right now. Hmm. <coughs> so what is the defense arguing exactly? I think they're pretty much going to argue ignorance is, is, you know, ignorance of the law, but ignorance of the law, we know, is no defense. Uh, he was is... not doing anything intentionally illegal. In his opinion, he oh, was trying okay. to help do what he thought was right. He was trying to influence politics because he wanted certain politicians to be elected or certain things to happen. But certainly it didn't rise to the level of him being an espionage agent of China is what they're going to say. That's crazy. That's just, you know, James Bond kind of stuff. He was just somebody trying to be involved and trying to help his country in the way that he thought was fit. I think that's the best defense and that's what the defense is going to be. So the defense is like, hey, his intentions were not anywhere near as sort of scandalous as you're suggesting. He had access to money. Lots of people make campaign contributions. What's wrong with this? What is the prosecution saying? They're saying he should know, he should have known better and ignorance of the law is no defense. You know, when you're involved with that kind of money and that much stuff, you should consult with lawyers. You should figure out what you're doing. That's what they're going to say. And because you violated these crimes, we're not only going to prosecute you because you're a public figure and because there are other public people involved and celebrities that may be witnesses. We want everyone in the world to know when you try to get involved in American government and you are in concert with a foreign government like China, don't do it. Be careful. Make do sure you know what you're doing before you do this. Do, are they suggesting that he was personally trying to benefit from it or that like, I mean, financially or that it was just he was trying to sort of peddle influence? I think both, right? There's mm. a lot of money involved. When you, you know, $100 million worth of influence. You don't mm. do that for nothing. You don't have any no side benefits. I mean, not this is big yacht that Joe Lowe is on. There's mm. all sorts of benefits that he got with this. So uh, what kind of a precedent uh, would this set uh, for how Michelle would be punished? So, you know, we call him the law a chilling effect. We want this to have a chilling effect on this kind of conduct. We want people to stop doing this. And this is why you see celebrities, entertainers, athletes often prosecuted, sometimes harsher or more vigorously than the average person because the public pays attention to cases like this. The federal government wants the public to pay attention to this and say, if you know of anybody, anything like this, or it even sounds or smells fishy, stop. Talk to a lawyer. That shit is wild. And it's crazy because <clears throat> I... I seen another article which about which they not talking about because it's not in the hip hop community. But this nigga actually, this nigga Prize actually was working with the hip hop police and the feds back in the day. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get more f footage and information. I'm gonna get more information on that part because this small part is just what the government is trying to get him for as far as this these these donations and all this stuff, these ties to China. But there's some there's some other shit in our community that I've seen and I'm going to research it and I'm going to look it up. I'm not going to tell every, I'm not going to even talk about it right now. All I'm going to say is I'm going to tell y'all I'm about to research that shit and I'm going to look it up and I'm going to bring that shit to y'all in the next one because i seen some other shit about Prize working with the motherfucking FBI on some shit, exposing rappers, exposing shit. I'm going to see what's up, man. Like I said, I got to see what's up with that. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. My dog, Rashad. Um, I'm going to skip past this one. I know everybody probably... I'm, gonna not, I'm not going to skip past it. I'm going to skim through it for time constraints because I know everybody probably pretty much is kind of familiar with this. Um, if not, here you go. Killed. 
by the police. Video just coming out. Here it is. Black King. 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 I stopped it right before the gunshot started. Put up the pictures for a mass. Let me explain to you what has happened in this country. See that young black male, 17 years of age, he was in, the in Greensboro, North Carolina. <coughs> the young Nasanto Antonio Crenshaw was gunned down by an officer with the Greensboro Police Department while fleeing a traffic stop August of last year. You see, they did not immediately give us access to this video. We have it now. Let me give you first the police account of the shooting. According to the Greensboro Police Department, the teenager, Mr. Crenshaw, was driving a stolen vehicle when he was stopped on West Market Street. They said two other teenagers, ages 17 and 15, were riding inside of the vehicle. Greensboro police say as officers approached the car, the young Crenshaw took off. When the vehicle was stopped for a second time, several teens jumped out and ran away. WRAL News has been told while police were trying to detain the other passengers in the car, Crenshaw hit the gas, ramming a patrol car. Police say he hit the gas again and that's when he was shot. So I'm going to give you the screenshots. And the screenshots indicate the three shots that were fired at the team. So each screenshot represents another shot at the team. OK, now, according to the police, they were shooting in these scenes. Why? Because obviously their lives were in danger. Okay, what danger do you see? Let's put up the mother. Okay, it's always a mother. Crenshaw's mother, who obviously is a uh, distraught still. It's not something you just get over. Her name is Waquita Doherty. Miss Doherty told WRAL News that she doesn't understand why they had to use deadly force. And she says her son was unarmed. Why couldn't you shoot out the tires? Why couldn't you throw down some strips? She poses those questions while crying. Anything besides shooting him dead. That's what you did. You shot him dead. I mean, them just facts, end quote. Let me give you the dispute over the vehicle even being stolen. The vehicle was called in stolen, okay? By a Fort Bragg soldier who did not want to be identified. Miss Doherty says Crenshaw, the 17 year old, told her the soldier had loaned him the car. Crenshaw used the car to drive to Greensboro with a group of friends from Fayetteville, but did not return in time, according to Miss Doherty. The mother said that the woman was upset with the young Crenshaw and called the police and reported the car as stolen. The soldier told WRAL News a different side of the story, said that Crenshaw stole her car and she did not give him permission to drive it. Now, naturally, this is something that really may not be argued. Why? Because the person being accused is dead. That's why. Yeah, so it's not this possibly could be very true. Yeah. But once again, the courts may not be the adequate place to weigh the evidence because the individual, once again, being accused of stealing the vehicle is no longer <coughs> there. There's more. 
Let's put up the lawyers who are representing the family. Crenshaw's family, they're being represented by nationally renowned civil rights attorneys, Harry Daniels, John Burris, as well as Shamika White. They all filed a federal lawsuit in connection to the killing. They put the following statement. Uh, we got an email this morning from the law firm. It says, District Attorney Avery Crump and the Greensboro Police Department have hidden the truth for long enough. But now that this video is public, it's undeniable. Even after they have tried to put their spin on it, the facts are clear. Corporal Sletton's life was never in danger. Nasanto Crenshaw, <coughs> the young 17-year-old, was never a threat. He was scared, he was unarmed, he was running for his life when this officer gunned him down and killed him. Okay. The so, this is a good point where I'm getting ready to get to the fat meat and, 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 and basically give my thoughts on it. Um, Y'all can read this, I'm going to keep it rolling. Um, I'm not going to pause it. Uh, I said it once and I said it again and I'm going to keep saying it. We have to stop putting ourselves in these positions. Young people, stop putting yourselves in these positions, man. These police do not care about you. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to the young man. Rest in peace to young Crenshaw, man. This is sad as fuck, man. That police did not have to use no deadly force. He wasn't in no kind of harm. He was just driving. There has to be some kind of law made about people just driving. And I mean, I, I get it. They don't want people to just run away from them and all that kind of stuff. Like, like I get it. I definitely get it. But like, stop, man. Like, stop, man. It ain't worth it, man. You only get one time around this big ball of uh, motherfucking dirt, man. And, uh. This is not an option, man. Being killed by the police, man, is not the way to go, man. It's this is basically free kills for them, man. They sitting back. To me, I feel like sometimes I feel like they sit back and they watch this shit and they watch these news. Like some people, some of them, I'm not gonna say all of them. Some of them watch this shit and they kind of applaud this. I think that they like this shit. We don't like this. We can't tolerate this shit. We can't have this, man. These are y'all's sons, brothers. Uncles, nephews, grandsons, granddaughters. They're not just killing the, the, the males, too. They're killing the girls, too. They're killing us off, y'all. They're trying to, man. And they're doing it for free. They're they doing it for free. Please stop putting yourselves in these positions, man. Think about what's going on. You know, <laughs> and this is such a sticky situation for him to get into because I believe that girl is lying. That soldier or whoever it is at Fort Bragg must have been some girl that he was messing with or something. I believe, I do believe that she was lying just because, because it sounds more like it. That sounds more like the truth that he borrowed the car but didn't bring it back on time. And then somebody said, if you don't bring it back on time, I'm going to report it stolen. Or that's just what she did, which is fucked up. And it, end, it ended in this man's, this young man's death. And that's fucked up, man. All the way, all the way unnecessary, man. All the way unnecessary. But like I said, man, we definitely, definitely got to do better, man, to protect our kids, man, and teach y'all kids inside the home. Teach y'all young boys and y'all girls hell of a story about about teach y'all kids about the the selections that they make, the choices that they make. The people that they hanging out with, you know what I'm saying? These split, this, these split second decisions. If you're not prepared, if these kids are not prepared for these split second decisions, can be life or death, man. And we see right here, we see that. So look, <laughs> this is some local shit, man. I had, to, I had to put it up. I had to put it up, man. It's some local shit. These police is crazy out here, man. I'm telling you, they're crazy in the city, y'all. Check them, check them out, man. Check this He's fool shit out steal a protester's car, according to the protester. Here's the video. They're in your car? So they're stealing her car?
So instead of towing it, he drove off. After speeding off and driving like they stole it, because they basically did, they drive the car to the parking lot of a school, block off an entrance, and box the stolen car in with their cruisers, putting the car out of view. I don't know about you, but if my car was being towed and the police were involved, I certainly wouldn't want the cops moving my vehicle from its original location without my consent or getting inside my vehicle at all <coughs> with the possibility of them tampering with or planning God knows what before the tow truck even arrives, especially when they didn't provide any paperwork documenting literally any of this. What is wrong with people? Like you just took their car and now they about to try to run off. Y'all bitch ass Now y'all want to run off. Now y'all want to run off. Get that girl her car back. Get that girl her car back. She got kids. Get that girl her car back. Y'all just gonna leave that girl stranded at the circle K. Get that girl her car back. Get that girl her car back. Give her her car back. Y'all can't take that girl's car. Now y'all gonna run that man over? You can't take that man. You can't take that man. After a wild goose chase, or should I say a wild hog chase, the cops are found in a third location with not one, not two, but three of our activist vehicles, and they're making multiple arrests, one being of a 14 year old child. Targeting activists. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took the oath to uphold the Constitution. All you're doing is spit in the Let her go! That is a kid. Let her go! That is a child! Told you. You're the wow. fucking wow. child! For a police department that is supposedly understaffed and stretched thin, the Akron Police Department sure does have enough resources to harass, intimidate, and retaliate against community activists and organizers who've done nothing but try to hold them accountable to the bare minimum standard of not murdering people. Just That's insane, is it not? Shocking. Something like that would happen I hope she got her to car anyone back. in this country. Shocking that any law enforcement agency would engage in such conduct, right? What is going on with All right, Ohio, so let, man? It used to be Florida, uh, this man. This is Ohio was now. during it a protest Police over the people killing of Jalen Walker. Uh, he was unarmed. They decided... Man, that shit is crazy, man. I can't believe that shit. <coughs> Stole the girl's car, boxed it in, man. Yeah, newly y'all check this out. Showing <laughs> <a movie. laughs> I couldn't wait to bring y'all this. Target Have right y'all here seen this in shit. Blue Ash. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Trisha Mackey. This is what I mean Williams. about Ohio. What is y'all doing, this man? This gets what kind of confusing, here, but stay with us. The African-American woman was talking with the manager about reparations this after shit. her bill added up to over $1,000. Chancellor Wynn joins us live in Blue Ash. She's going to break down the video for us. Chance? Yeah, Rob, Trisha, this video has been circulating on social media. Now we are finally being able to put it on Fox 19 Now's newscast for all of you all to see. And it does get a bit confusing, but the woman seen the video, she actually ends up being convicted of disorderly conduct. And I want to warn you that the video could be disturbing and graphic to some viewers, but we we're going to show you multiple security camera angles and even the body camera footage from the officers when they arrived on scene. Target. This security camera shows the moment test, a security test, guard at Target test, in Blue target, Ash bro. punched 37-year-old Karen Ivory, knocking Soccer, her to the ground. Boy. According to court documents, the security guard says he feared for his safety and called police. I decided to take a stand. This is my Rosa Parks moment, dude. Don't play with me. That is what Ivory is told crazy, officers man. when they arrived to the scene on October 22nd of last year. Before the punch, Ivory was checking out a Target in Blue Ash with more than $1,000 worth of items. When it came time to pay, court documents state Ivory told one, Target employees that she didn't That's have enough good. money and that the That's manager stuff, should contact though, corporate man. to comp the bill because of, quote, reparations. But then things took a turn. You can Look. see from this security camera, Ivory face to face with the store manager before Look security ran to intervene. You chased the one employee all the way to the front, okay? 
you made contact with her body by pushing your body into hers. I just watched it clear as day on the video. Okay. The court documents go on to state that employees told Ivory the store could not give her the items for free, which upset Look her. At the baby. Allegedly, Ivory <laughs> followed the employee to his office and forced her way in. That's when the employee says he feared for his safety and punched Ivory. He then came out and you followed him all the way back here. Okay. Making him fear for his safety. You backed him into an office and you got hit in the face and you are going to get arrested. Okay. This is what I mean. This is a prime example of what I mean. Don't put yourself in this situation. Bitch, why the fuck was you in Target trying to get a thousand dollar worth of shit that you know you couldn't afford talking about some motherfucking reparations? You out your rabbit ass mind. Something wrong with you. With your crazy ass. Man. That is nuts. Side down, the chaotic situation that ended Woo. with a woman's SUV on its roof in the middle of the street in Forest Park. It was all caught on camera, an argument, a man dragged and a flipped over One SUV. And now and a woman in that SUV is charged. Tia Ewing has a disturbing situation all around. Yes, I guess the good thing true. is uh, nobody was hurt in this. It's wild, and Forest Park police tell us this video you're about to see helped them piece together exactly what happened, and now a female is in custody. Oh, my baby! Oh, my baby! Y'all better go ahead! This wild video was recorded after an argument started oh. at Jackson Boulevard and Harlem Avenue at the Thornton's gas station Sunday after 3. Jay Mills recorded it all. Because they, they was like... They start throwing cups and balls. I'm like, it's, it's for the escalate. He was with his family, and they say the woman behind the wheel of the Ford SUV started hurling homophobic and racial slurs at the two. Oh my baby, oh my baby, oh my calling baby. them the N word and um, you know, monkey and all that stuff. From there, the fight escalated as people were trying to. Oh. Up. Oh! The red van dragging the man that was with her for several feet. Then this happened. As the SUV fled the gas station, the driver struck a vehicle waiting at the southbound turn signal at Jackson and then flipped over. It was as if nothing happened at all. The driver managed to exit out of the broken window and started laughing. Just how much damage was done. Hey, the male hey, companion were far from done. Like Bonnie and Clyde, they were captured on camera trying to flee the it. scene. Like, come here, I'm going to Forest Park Police is only charging Nance. She didn't have a valid driver's license, and now she's charged with wow. criminal damage to property, two counts of aggravated assault, reckless driving, <laughs> among other charges. Cool. Tia Ewing, Fox See. 32, Chicago. Man. <laughs> oh, y'all be tripping anyway, man. Y'all chill out, man. I got some good stuff for y'all real quick, man. Y'all just y'all just chill out real quick. That's crazy. Hi, I'm Kevin Roach from a professional. Oh, boy. All right. refers to the children All right. get, as ghetto Back section eight and everything else. We didn't even do nothing, so we're recording you right now. That that you that's harassment, right? No, it's not. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It's harassment. You're a grown ass man. We're minors though. Actually, I'm
My bad, y'all. There we go. Refers to the children <laughs> get as ghetto, hey, section back. eight, and everything. Call to cops. Over. Refers to the children <laughs> get as ghetto, section eight, and everything else. We didn't even do nothing, so we recording you right now. That that you have harassment, right? No, it's not. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It's harassment. You're a grown ass man. We're minors, though. Actually, I'm we the minors. Board director here. We're minors. So, I don't We're care. minors. Officer, so you how you like it in your here. face? Three section eight. How you like here. in your face? Ghetto girls. How you like in your face? Look at this. No, you're grown. Like this is a grown man, right? Yep. You're grown. You go right here. You're a girl, so I'm recording you too. Look at this, right here. Yes. Um, let's do this. Let's put the picture up for a mask. Nah. Uh, we are These going to chirping. highlight this directly. You're looking at Brigene Lewis on the left, Kyra Scrub on the right. They say she they were racially like profiled too. in a gated community in Fresno, California. Let me give you the background. A white male in Fresno reportedly called 911 after a verbal confrontation with three ass. teenage black girls that inside like a gated community. Day That's according to ABC 7 News. <laughs> okay. Fred Z. Like Nandall, a principal at Sunnyside High School in Fresno, said he was calling the police on April 16th following oh, yeah, the man. confrontation. My black 17 year old Kyra Scrub, 17 year old. Region 8 Lewis, oh, and a friend as they cut through the neighborhood on their way to the store. The girls began recording the principal as he made a phone call, and one of the teens was heard saying that he was harassing them. We didn't even do nothing. So we recording you right now. You know, that's harassment, right? After the principal responded by saying, no, it's not. He has heard calling <laughs> no, the not. three teenagers ghetto officers you got three girls here, he said. Three Section 8 people here, ghetto girls. The principal also held up his phone as if he was also recording the three teenagers. Let me stop right here. There's one, it's one thing to call law enforcement because you think somebody is a nuisance, okay? Remember, you're inviting a gun to a situation where a gun is not required. It's already extreme. And then in the process of you doing this, you decide to refer to children, to children as Section 8 and ghetto, which, by the way, informs us of your bias, informs the world. You are in a position of ultimate public trust as you, as a principal, <clears throat> You are to govern the administrative processes of this, of these children or fired. children at large. I have more information, more background. This high school principal has also heard telling the teens that he is on the gated community's board of directors. Kyra's mom told the outlet that her daughter and her friends, they take a shortcut through the gated community because it cuts 10 minutes off their walk to the store. She added that the teens have access there has a have access because they have a friend living in the gated community. Kyra told the outlet that the principal was being racist for no reason. You didn't have to do all that. You didn't have to racial profile for no reason, she said. I feel so bad because, like, as a black woman, I should be able to walk, you know, and do just walk peacefully without, you know, people being racist for no reason. Um, and she is absolutely correct. He's an adult. He's an adult who decided to show his racism because he did not like something. He was uncomfortable with black children walking, not bothering him, right. not doing anything against him or his property, just walking. And there's more. The thing right there. Why would you even say some stuff like that? We're minors, added Regine. I hope he gets fired. He got to go. The girl said, that the police never showed up and it's unclear if the principal actually called the authorities. <clears throat> the teens learned that the principal was a uh, was at a high school after posting the video on TikTok. So they had no idea who this guy was until they exposed him. All right. <clears throat> There's more. Fresno Unified. There it is. Said they are investigating the incident. Quote, 
We are aware of the video circulating. And the district started an investigation into the matter early Monday. The labels used in the video do not align with the high standards we have for our Fresno Unified Leaders and Staff. Uh, Read the statement. We want to assure our families that uh, that having respectful, inclusive, and loving adults serving in our school is of the utmost importance to Sunnyside and our district as a whole. The principal is currently on paid administrative leave while the school district investigates, that's according to the spokesperson, Nikki Henry. Um, So these young children, these black girls, called for the firing of this principal. I think they are being appropriate in their request. Uh, And I will say, uh, young ladies, I do believe you will get the request you have proclaimed. Okay? Once again, position of public trust, high public trust, there's a high bar, high standard that must be recognized and applied. We do not play with our children and their safety. If a principal has d- these deeply rooted beliefs just by calling the police or allegedly calling the police on black teenage girls, imagine what he believes and how he treats children that may not look like him or his children. All right. David, thoughts on this? Well, I was glad that the school district put out that statement saying that uh, he has been on administrative leave, but there was something about that statement that also bothered me. They said it was his labels that were the problem. It wasn't just his labels. It was his action. It was his racist beliefs that were so evident. To have an educator who's got that, that is so frustrating. And the other thing about it is I can remember somebody else who used to cut through the backyard of a really nice house on the way to elementary school 40-some years ago. That was me. And you know what? I, my house wasn't as nice as the, the 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 street that I was cutting through. I suppose if somebody had complained to me, sure, I would have changed my route. But you would expect that if somebody is angry that somebody is using your neighborhood as a cut through, you approach them. And you, you, you have the decency and respect to that person and say, look, I'd rather you not cut through here or stay on this, whatever it is. But to just sort of fly off the handle and to then call police and then to use, you know, show your sort of racism is outrageous. I hope that... Um, Principal, vice principal, whatever he is, I hope he never gets another job in teaching again. There you go. Every child, including when we were children, we cut through yep. communities mm-hmm. or sometimes a parking Who's lot. Cut through the Jewish Center. We wanted to shorten the route. We walked. It ain't we walked new. everywhere. It ain't nothing new. But well, she's like I said, only I told eight you years I got old. Our next guest y'all, is taking the fashion world by storm. She's really building a fashion empire. Check this Brooke out. Brooke Loren has seen her looks on red carpets, and they've been worn by stars like Tabitha Brown. She joins us now in studio to share how fashion is inspiring her and how she's inspiring many across the world. Brooke, so glad to have you here. Welcome. Hi. Hi. You are in one of your own designs. I love it. Thank you. You also designed your shoes, too. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a gold moment. Mm-hmm. We're here for it. <laughs> Good to see you, sweetheart. When did your love of fashion become a reality for you? Well, the love of fashion is when I, at the age of three, um, my, I would go in my mom's clothes and I would wear her shoes, dresses, and pants. And uh, one day when I was four, I was like, if I'm wearing my mom's clothes, what about if I make my own? And that's when I started it. I, I love that she's this this mogul, this this entrepreneur at three and four years old. You're gifted, very talented. So your aesthetic, your style, your sense of fashion, you love flowers, you love ruffles. What is it about them? Well, for the flowers for me is that I love these princess movies where like they're what? always in like the magic like like garden. Disney? Yeah. Okay. Like they're in the magic garden. And my like I my favorite Disney princess movie is Snow White because I love the flowers in the movie. And it has a beautiful flower in there. I don't remember the name of it, but it's actually really, really beautiful. Well, now you're designing for everyone, and you are everywhere. I got to see you on Access Hollywood. You got mm-hmm. to design Tabitha Brown's dress for the Family and Children Emmys. How did that come to life? First, she actually made a video on her social media page. She was looking for a children's fashion designer, and all my friends and family were tagging me and when I saw it, I was like, well, 
Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? <laughs> and then once I nice. like saw it, like And then my mom was like, why are you screaming? And I was like, I just made it. Miss Tapas just said I'm designing her dress. And so. And then she was like. <gasps> it's like a dream come true, right? Yeah. And so you designed the dress. What was it like working with her? Did she give you pointers of what she wanted? Did she give you ideas? So uh, when I watched her show, I realized that she really loved orange and pink. So that's when I came up like, why don't I put a orange tool and the orange, I mean and pink tool mm -hmm. together and then uh, I had this like orange and pink it dress. Was beautiful. Yes. Stunning. I, I love it. How does it feel to know that young girls and young boys all around the world love your designs, they love, they love your fashions? It feels for me is that all these people that are like young or adult or something, they should know that you're never too young to start your dreams. And when I see these people liking my stuff that I wear and make, um, it's like a dream come true. Yeah, but you're never too young to follow your dreams. You're never too young to design your life, right? Yeah. That's a great message, an awesome message. You can get all of Brooke's designs at brooklorenfashions.com. You're in for a treat. <laughs> they are stunning, just like you, young lady. You are the cat's meow. I've been saying that lately. It's, I think it's fitting, it's fitting, it's fitting. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now nah, that's cool. That's cool. If Heard your business kept young, on employees through the pandemic. Got that that going on like that. That's dope. So I got one more good thing for y'all, man. Then we're going to wrap it up, man. I'm trying to get a little good news in here, man, to highlight the youngsters and stuff. So let's hit this record breaking high schooler man let's see what he, let's see what they talking about up on our social media feeds local high schooler broken a national record for scholarship offers dennis barnes is a senior at an international high school of new orleans he applied to more than 200 colleges and got uni and universities and got offers from 125 wow. of them wow. oh they add up to more than nine million dollars that is more than any other high school senior in u.s history as for where he'll go Barnes says he'll announce that decision on May 2nd. I think we should all stand by like draft A. <laughs> it, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. FYI, yeah. by the way, his GPA is 4.98. Oh, <laughs> only? <laughs> oh, that's it. Do you see how many cords he was wearing? Yes. <laughs> he is decked out. Good for him. I can't I wait to see where he's going to go and what he's going to do. They need a Big ceremony. Things. Like, he has to do the hat like they do yeah. for all yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Like that. He said so the goal was to get $10 million that's in, amazing. in scholarship offers. I guess there's still a chance oh oh to get a few more scholarships. Absolutely. That's just who he's heard from. Yeah. Good that's him. amazing. Yeah, that's, that's just crazy. awfully good stuff. All right. <laughs> that's dope, man. Before that's Jobber, so it was late nights and... I'm excited dope, about this man. one. So, I appreciate y'all for hanging out. Yeah, he do got a lot of cords on him. He do got a lot of cords on him, man. Y'all... Appreciate y'all for hanging out with me, man. Um, episode 62. Uh, like I said, we got some couple things we're going to get back to, man. We see some goofy, crazy shit. Um, man, I just want to say, honestly, man, y'all, please stay out of these crazy situations, man. If y'all can help it, man, just relax, man. Chill. Take it one step at a time, man. Just... Just be cool, man. All this, all these attitudes and this bucking up against the, 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 like the system. That's cool, man. But you gotta know how to. You gotta know how to buck and win, how to win the buck. I'm not saying ain't nothing wrong with bucking up against the system, but you can't just do it haphazardly. You gotta have some kind of plan or some kind of something going on to where you know, you know, what I'm saying something. Something planned, man. Don't just go out there acting crazy. I still can't get over this bitch it's racking up a thousand dollars at Target. Talk about they need to pay for a reparation. Target need to pay for your reparations. Target, that's what your reparations is worth. Some weird ass shit tonight, man. But anyway, man, I'm finna go chill out, man. You already know how to go, man. Um, uh. A lot of things coming in the in the future, man. Y'all just stay tuned, man. Um, Brick Kings, episode two. Uh,
coming soon. Episode one right now, almost at 10K on YouTube, man. Y'all go check that out, man. Shout out to Dez um, and all the actors, McKilo, you know what I'm saying, Block, uh, Layla, everybody, man. All the actors, man. Shout out to all y'all, man. Um, uh, in my own lane, on the way, it's summertime. Um, Gallimore Free 2, I heard, is on his way. Uh, shout out to Drip. Um, man, you know, just just stay tuned, man. If y'all, man, just go on to all, go on to all of our socials, man. Like for real, for real, for real. I know everybody else ain't here to get that shit, to put that shit out there, man. But uh, every, but y'all there, man. Y'all find it. It's there. I think I got them in the. Matter of fact, they are. If y'all look in the what's the name, the socials is in the <clears throat> description, man. Check out everybody's socials, man. Get. get Man, Tony Spitz got some shit coming out, man. Like, like that's what I'm saying. Check, check out everybody's socials, man. And follow us, man, for real. And then I really want to get together and get a hub for everybody to get to. I do have blackmoneymedia.live. I might be putting a lot of different things on there, too, and thinking about uh, doing some stuff straight off the website um, for you guys. Don't forget, we also got the customizer on there. You want to make some custom shirts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, custom clothes, just go on there. Go to Custom Drip. Um... I think we got hats, hoodies, uh, shirts. We got everything, man. Mugs. We got anything you want, man. We you can you can customize it yourself. Uh, hands off. You know what I'm saying. Nobody got to, You know what I'm saying. Psh, nobody telling you what to do. You can put. You can upload your own pictures. Whatever, man. And shipping is real fast, man. It comes in. I think. I think my warehouse is getting stuff out now in like maybe less than a week, maybe four days, four or five days. They're getting things out. So. Um, y'all, uh, y'all check it out, man. Once again, that's blackmoneymedia.live. Blackmoneymedia.live. Just go to custom drip, go to customizer, make your own clothes, man. Get it cracking, man. All right, man. So, um, and we got some other stuff on there. Check out all the other merch. Um, and we do have kids clothes on there also. Um, and I will, I'm about to start advertising more of the kids clothes stuff because I see that's a niche that a lot of people don't have. Um, so, uh. Anyway, man, y'all get with me, man. Look out for them bear woods, man. They on the way. Ha! Peace. Oh, I forgot, man. Like we always say, man, hug somebody. Tell somebody you love somebody, man. Tell somebody you love them, man. Spread that shit, man. Spread that love around, man. We can't never get enough of that. And that's for damn sure, y'all. All right, peace.